Hi, my name is Daniel Guys. I'm the Creative and Technical Director at ED Films. And what we're looking at here is just something we've been working on over on the Twitch stream with the community. One of the community members by the name of Colin Harvey actually presented me with a really simple little expression that can be used to fake cloth movements on a rig. So I took that and complicated it a little bit to make something work with this really busy puppet character here. And I'm going to show you the roots of that and how it was done. This is the thing that's ultimately driving the whole script. As I drag this object around, both, both vertically and horizontally, so it doesn't just have to move uh, vertically, you could also move it horizontally as well. And pull it over here, and we'll bring it back, and then we'll you know, put it back to zero. So as you move it up and down, it sort of swings about, and then as you, if you pull it back and forth, it'll do the same thing. It's not accurate, like it's not 100% accurate because really ultimately if something's gonna do that, by this point it would have come, back, it would have come down again. However, it does give you a nice a approximation of at least something that doesn't require an intense physics simulation. Essentially what this little piece of code is doing, which is right here, is we set up this little variable which we're calling D and it's watching the anchor point position of the, of the object currently and then it's also watching the anchor point position of the object, you know, 0.1 of a second previously. And then it's adding it, both the X and Y position, the difference, it's adding the difference of those things to the rotation. It's just saying, depending on how much this thing has moved, the difference of how much it's moved over 0.1 seconds or whatever this is, 0.1 time minus 0.1, that difference between 0.1 and zero, it's tracking and adding to the rotation. Now this doesn't give you swaying, it doesn't give you like a realistic pendulum feeling or anything, but it's so basic that it really isn't much of a strain on the pipeline. And once you've rigged it up a little bit, you can get something more like this guy here with all these little pieces going on. So I'll break down, I'm going to break down one of the pieces on this character and show you how it works. It's the same concept, exact concept as we just watched. It's just a little more involved. There's more pieces on the go. Okay, so this one's one here, and I'll just, I'm just going to turn off and I'll show you what's happening. So you can see this cloth piece is sort of moving around. It gives it a nice enough feeling. It's not 100% accurate, but you get, you get something that feels a little more believable, especially once the character's all moving around. Um, it would be good for hair and things like that. Now, I've got a bunch of things I've added to this piece of cloth here, and these are the little controllers that I've made. So we have the driver, and the driver is ultimately just like in this guy right here, it's the thing we're looking at for the difference of position, right? So I have a driver and it's basically right now, it's looking at the, the actual pelvis, come here, it's 29, it's the pelvis cloth. So I've got a pelvis cloth object and that pelvis cloth here is just parented to the actual pelvis. Essentially, I, we've got a pelvis, which this was just auto-rigged using Duic, and then I just duplicated that, that pelvis and made it the cloth one. And you'll see why in just a second. Because you could just use the pelvis and you'd get the same results. Um, the only thing I wanted is I wanted to be able to add the cloth to wiggle out so that I could sway it back and forth after the character comes to a rest. So I added this pelvis cloth so that I could animate it on top of the character's movement to sort of keep things going outside of the movement of the character itself. We have stiffness and stiffness is just changing how much the cloth actually moves. So if I put stiffness to 0.3, you'll see that we get more dramatic bends, which I would have to change the comp side to make the size to make those work. If I need to, I can always expand the composition size. You don't have to do it inside of a nested composition either. I just did that to make it so I could do a whole bunch of them if I wanted without having puppet pins all over the place. I have a time offset, which will change the, the reading of the driver. So if I put to negative one, you'll see that things will move, but it won't move exactly right. Cause it's, it's basically taking the driver's movement and offsetting it by, this is negative one. I don't know whether it's seconds or what it is. We also have a bone time offset and that determines how much these bones take time. They take to trail each other, which you'll see in a moment. And then I have offset, which is just a general angle offset, which I don't have implemented, but I can use that to drive the rotation of the whole thing. So let's go and see what it's actually doing. So I have this, this object here with a whole bunch of pins in it. And essentially I have a little controller object. Now this one is the thing that's driving everything. It's doing exactly what this guy was doing. It's got the same kind of idea 
right? You see how it's moving around? But the big difference is, let's take a look at the code here. We're, we're going to first take a look at its position. Now remember, on the original one that we have here, the position is just animated right in the composition, so it doesn't. we don't have any code on it. It doesn't matter. What I wanted to do here was I wanted to watch what the hips were doing and what their position was, the relative position, or what the change in position was. So basically in the posi position thing here, I'm looking to grab the existing animation or position shift of the hips. So that's why I have a driver, just to make it so I can also visualize it. I don't have to have a driver, but I want to be able to visualize things. We don't need this here. That's irrelevant. We have hip equals composition, the walking rig. Essentially, we're just saying where the, the hip is. Um, and we have this effect called driver. It's basically saying, what is the hip controller? And I did this so that we could easily switch it out and add things without having to recode everything. So this is the driver right here. If I change this, this is just, a, if you go into expressions here, expression controls, you can just call uh, an actual layer control. And that allows you to use a layer dynamically and reference it as an expression, you know, and have it swappable so you can have an input on it. I'm just saying, can you, this hip, hip variable is equal to whatever the layer composition I've selected in the driver. So then we're looking at its hip global position INIT, which is initial. And it's just looking at the whatever this layer object is here, it's putting its space to world and it's grabbing its anchor point at zero seconds. So essentially we've got hip to world. So we're taking its space and putting it to world space and we're grabbing its anchor point at zero seconds. And then in here we have the hip global position, which is essentially its current position, hip to world, hip anchor point. So we have its initial starting position and we have its current position. And then what we're doing is we are creating a hip different differential position. So I'm going hip global position minus hip global position initial. And so that's where we're basically subtracting its starting point from its finished point. And then we have value plus hip dot diff position. So that we're just taking the value of this as it is natively at zero, zero, and adding the hip diff position. Now, the reason we, we make all this extra work here is first off so that we can track the, the hip position no matter what's going on. The reason we do the hip diff position here, hip diff pos equals, is so that if the hip begins in a different spot, it doesn't change. If the whole animation, you'll see right here, it wouldn't make a big mess of curves because we basically saying wherever the hip is starting on frame zero is the zero reference point. That's essentially what we're doing is we're eliminating the problem to have to retract something else because we also don't know for sure. Maybe we're tracking the hip, but maybe we decide to track a shoulder for one of these pieces instead. So we don't want to have numbers pre-programmed in there. So essentially we're saying, look at its very initial position and that we know is the starting point. So we want to watch the difference of that. Then we have the rotation and the rotation is exactly what we had before. You can see we're just wiggling. It's exactly the same thing. And then all we do now is we propagate that rotation all the way down the rest of the puppet pins. As you see here. So every single one of these, we have the initial one, which is the base one, the one at the root here. So there's a little more going on here. This root pin right here is essentially watching the rotation value of this guy right here and adding it to itself. That's all it's doing basically. But then what I've added is I've added some variables. Like I've added a time offset a stiffness slider, and then a stiffness, which is a general stiffness, and then an offset. Time offset is essentially, when we look into the equation here, take the driver's rotation and add it to this guy's rotation, which was all we could be doing. But if we wanted to add a little extra, like we have the stiffness, we have the time offset, all that does is give us a little bit extra to control this with. So basically I'm saying, take this guy's rotation, like watch the driver, and take that value at a certain time, dependent on the time offset I've got rigged up in here. So if I've got time offset, if I set that to a different right here, we're going to be looking at it X number of seconds later, and then add it and multiply it by stiffness. So if my stiffness is at, it's sort of an inverse equation. I have one minus stiffness. So basically I'm looking at this slider right here and whatever my stiffness is, if I have my stiffness to one, it's one minus one. So it means zero, what ultimately means I'm not, mo I'm not creating any rotations at all. So it's, it's sort of a way to create an inverse stiffness slider. You could have just made it without doing the negative thing. You could have just made it um, 
a softness slider. So as the softness goes up, we increase the multiplier, but I decided to use stiffness. So it's a little bit of a flip, but essentially all this is doing is multiplying it at the end. And what I also need to do is I should be technically adding offset, which I forgot to do in the original equation plus offset. So that means now if I go in here, I can add the offset and that will affect the whole thing. So that means I can custom animate this to get a little swing going back and forth. So I don't know if that makes a lot of sense. We have a bone time offset. We're going to see that in the next little piece here. So right here on the next pin down here is, this is really quite basic. We're looking at, we have the bone time offset variable, which is essentially looking at that slider. And I'm saying grab the parent rotation, like take this guy's rotation and grab the parent rotation at a certain value in time, like at a certain time and take time plus the time offset. So normally the way we write this is it was time, you know, minus 0.2. You could just have something like that, but I wanted it so that we could actually use a time offset so that if I make the time offset greater, so if we have negative 0.02, if I put it negative 0.4, what you'll see is that the cloth folds a little bit slower. See how that happens? And it changes the feel of the cloth a little bit. Negative 0.2 seems to move nicely for what we're doing, but I can at least change it. So that's the whole point of that thing there. It's all the same equation and the same idea, and it propagates all the way up through the whole puppet. All right, so the, the real benefit of doing it this way with a nested comp and the way that we've structured the code in here so that it's referencing, like if you look in here, hip, it's referencing this comp name and effect driver. So this is an interesting little thing here. It's like, it's looking for a layer that has the same name as this composition. So because I actually threw that in, instead of this layer's specific composition name, it means that I can very quickly create a whole bunch of copies of this thing. So I'm saying like, look for a layer that has this comp's name in it. So cloth G comp essentially is what it's looking for. So it goes in here and it's looking for that and it finds that layer, that layer exists right there and there's the driver. The, what this allows me to do is duplicate this like this. So now we have two of them. They should be ex affected exactly the same. But now I can go in here and I can duplicate this one and I will call it comp 01. I can alt click and drag to replace comp 01. And because again, because it's looking for very, for the effects from the comp's name, this comp's name. So it's looking for a layer called cloth G comp zero one. And then on that layer, it's looking for these effects. What it means is I can change its values. 0.5, negative 0.01. I don't know, I can do any of this stuff. Negative 0.15. And what happens is I get a very different effect on this cloth. And I can still use the exact same piece of cloth. I could, I, and then what I can do on top of that, the reason you would do this is so you could stack a whole bunch of them together and start doing different things with it. So you could start creating like a whole bunch of little cloths, or if you really wanted to, you could use like a little container that you can swap out a whole bunch of different cloth pieces for. So inside cloth G comp could be another nested composition where you can put a whole bunch of different cloths inside of, it and you'll get a general deformation that looks good. So the point of this piece is to be able to add a whole bunch of these things wherever I want without having to recode the source code every time. So let's just look at that one more time. We're basically saying the hips are is this walking, talking rigged layer. Look for the layer that has the same name as this. And there you will find all the effects that we're referencing. I do this all over this whole project and it makes it so I can create multiples of everything and get stuff moving about. Uh, wash, rinse, repeat, and you get the final puppet. So I hope that makes some sense. I hope it's not too long winded and annoying and boring to listen to. Um, it's a little faster than some of the Twitch streams. I'll continue to try to do these every now and then. But uh, there you have it. If you are interested in being part of the process as we come up with this stuff, please feel free to join us on Twitch. We stream three days a week. It was definitely the community there helped me bring this code together to make this character happen. And also, if you are interested in supporting uh, the funding of more tutorials and more content, you can come check us out on Patreon, You know where you'll find some pretty sweet perks and you can suggest on how you'd like to see things go in the future. So thanks a lot for watching.